estate planning tools on this week's edition of WealthWise. Please welcome our guest speaker, Sarah Morang, an estate planning attorney in Athens, Georgia with Frierson and Morang. Today, Sarah will discuss estate planning tools such as the Georgia Power of Attorney and Advanced Directive for Healthcare. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Deanne. I'm happy to be here with you and Elevate Wealth Advisory to discuss estate planning. In this segment, we'll discuss two estate planning documents which are common to many plans, the Georgia Advanced Directive for Healthcare and the Financial Power of Attorney. These are largely utilized before death, although the advanced directive has some provisions which are still effective after death. A healthcare directive is a vital piece of an estate plan. Georgia now uses the Georgia Advanced Directive for Healthcare, a uniform statutory document which you may obtain from your attorney, your doctor, at local hospitals, or online. The advanced directive permits you to name a series of people who are authorized to make healthcare decisions for you subject to the constraints and directives you select in the document. It's meant to be a self-help document. However, many of the provisions are technical, so you may wish to consult a lawyer or healthcare provider as you complete it. Part one deals with selecting a healthcare agent and certain powers of the agent. The agent is the person who would make healthcare decisions if you are unable to do so yourself. It's important to have someone nominated in this way, particularly for people who may not want to rely on the default selection under the Georgia Code, usually a spouse or child. I advise my clients to choose a trusted person who would be available in an emergency and who understands and can navigate implementing healthcare wishes. Your agent will only make decisions if you are unable to communicate or choose to rely on your agent instead of making your own decisions. Your agent generally has the power to admit you to a medical facility, authorize or refuse treatment on your behalf, contract for medical expenses, and access your medical records. Part one goes on to outline some powers your agent may have after death, which you may limit by placing your initials in the appropriate blanks. These powers, which you may restrict, are autopsy, donation of the body for use in a medical study program, organ donation, and decisions about the final disposition of your body. Part two of the document deals with decision making when a person is very ill. This is what people traditionally think of when they decide to make out a living will or healthcare directive, choosing treatment options in the event of terminal illness or a state of permanent unconsciousness. Note the choices here. I think of these on a spectrum, from the most intervention, option A, keep my body going, to the least intervention, option B, pain medicine, but permit a natural death, to an intermediate decision tree, option C, which permits you to choose from the below options of nutrition and fluid by tube, ventilator, and CPR. You may wish to consult your physician about the implications of each, but your attorney is typically also trained to discuss the basic meaning of each option. This document often leads to a question about do not resuscitate orders. These are implemented in the hospital, either by the patient or the healthcare agent. The advanced directive permits your agent to sign a DNR on your behalf, but it is not itself a DNR. Last, guardianship. The advanced directive permits you to nominate a guardian if you ever need one. A guardian is appointed by the probate court to make decisions for a person who has lost the capacity or who is not able to communicate significant responsible decisions concerning his or her personal health or safety. It's a rare proceeding, but these provisions allow you to give the probate court direction as to who you would prefer act as your guardian should you ever need one. The document gives you clear instructions on witnessing and it does not need to be notarized. Next, the financial power of attorney. A power of attorney authorizes another person, the agent, to make decisions concerning your property. If you can no longer handle your financial affairs and you do not have a valid power of attorney, it may be difficult for your loved ones to see that your bills get paid. If your incapacity continues, your local probate court will likely need to appoint a conservator. The conservator will be authorized to handle your financial affairs, but will be subject to ongoing obligations to report to the court, seek approval for certain actions, and maintain a bond. And all this can be burdensome and expensive. If you have a valid power of attorney, you may be able to avoid the need for a conservatorship proceeding altogether, saving your loved ones time and trouble. If you have no one that you can trust with your financial matters, it may be best to do without a power of attorney, 
that you should consider the conservatorship process carefully when evaluating this decision. Most advisors will urge that their clients include a power of attorney as part of their estate plan, particularly as the client ages and the odds of needing one increase. There are many types of powers of attorney, but in this segment, we'll focus on the Georgia statutory power of attorney. It's important that you understand the power of attorney that you are signing, as it gives significant authority to another person. This is one area where I believe the advice and counsel of an attorney can be invaluable. The Georgia statutory power of attorney permits you to name a series of people who are authorized to handle financial matters for you. It is, unless you restrict it, effective when you sign it. I can't say enough about the importance of choosing a trusted person to serve in this role. Your agent should have financial skills, be familiar with their lifestyle and finances, and most importantly, be trustworthy. Let's review some terms you will encounter in the power of attorney. Agent. The agent is the person you authorize to make decisions regarding your property. Principal. This is the person giving authority to another. If you are signing the power of attorney, you are the principal. Durable. Durability means that the document is effective even after the principal becomes incapacitated. The Georgia statutory power of attorney is durable unless the principal says otherwise in the document. The Georgia statutory power of attorney contains two lists of subjects the principal may authorize the agent to handle. The first is described as general and contains a list of many common financial matters. Note that these are more thoroughly defined in the Georgia Code. If you have questions about them, you should discuss them with your attorney or look up the code section. The second set of subjects is described as specific and contains subjects your agent is not allowed to handle unless you specifically authorize these matters. You should review these carefully and determine if you truly want to permit your agent to take actions such as changing beneficiary designations or titling of assets. The power of attorney permits you to nominate a conservator should you ever need one, and it is revocable at will. A photocopy is generally as good as the original. Note that the power of attorney must be signed by the principal, at least one witness, and a notary, who should all sign where indicated. The power of attorney is not valid without meeting these minimum requirements. When it is time to rely upon the power of attorney, you or your agent will want to share it with your financial advisor, bank, and other financial professionals. This concludes our overview of the Georgia Advanced Directive for Healthcare and the Georgia Statutory Power of Attorney. Thank you for joining us for this conversation hosted by Elevate Wealth Advisory.